यू आर म्यूटेड अब आपकी आवाज सुनाई नहीं देगी
Hello, welcome to all participants. Thank you for coming. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon to all. Good afternoon. हेलो हेलो अगर माझा आवाज येतोय हो येतो येतो ओके तुमचा पण येतो सर येत आहेत ना हो सर येत आहेत सरांना फोन केला होता मी आता सर येत आहेत
नमस्कार सर्वांच जनादलत संस्थेच्या वतीनं आज पुन्हा स्वागत आज एक वेगळा विषय आपण घेऊन आलेलो आहोत डिफेन्सेस इन क्रिमिनल ट्रायल अत्यंत महत्वाचा विषय आहे त्या विषयावरती माननीय ऍडव्होकेट हर्षद निंबाळकर सर आपल्याला मार्गदर्शन करणार आहेत सर जॉईन व्हायला अजून सरांना एक दोन मिनिट दोन ते तीन मिनिटं लागतील तोपर्यंत मी थोडक्यात जनादलाची ओळख आपल्याला करून देतो काही सदस्य नवीन आज सहभागी झालेले आहेत जनादल संस्था ही दोन हजार सहा साली स्थापन झाली पॅरालिगल सर्व्हिसेस मध्ये काम करणारी संस्था आहे याच्यामध्ये मुख्य उद्देश संस्थेचा असा आहे की अल्प उत्पन्न गटातल्या लोकांना याचं सहकार्य व्हावं कायदेशीर मदत मिळावी हा संस्थेचा मुख्य उद्देश यामध्ये आहे पुण्यामध्ये संस्थेचे चार सेंटर केंद्र चालतात चारही ठिकाणी केंद्र चालतात त्याला चांगला प्रतिसाद आहे अनेक गरजू पीडित या सगळ्या केंद्रांची मदत घेऊन आपल्या सगळ्या कायदेशीर ज्या काही समस्या असतात त्या सोडून घेण्याचा प्रयत्न करतात ज्युनियर वकिलांसाठी काय या सगळ्याच्यातलं ट्रेनिंग असेल किंवा लेक्चर्स असतील किंवा वेगवेगळ्या कॉन्फरन्सेस असतील अशाचं काही नियोजन करता येईल का त्या अनुषंगानं सुद्धा गेल्या चार पाच वर्षात या सगळ्या कार्यक्रमाचं नियोजन संस्थेने केलेलं आहे महाराष्ट्रामध्ये अशा अनेक जण काम करत असतात आपलं व्यावसायिक आपल्या या सगळ्या गोष्टी पाहून सामाजिक गोष्टीचं भान ठेवून असे अनेक वकील कार्यरत असतात अशातल्या एका सुंदर काम करणाऱ्या एका चांगलं काम करणाऱ्या वकिलाला जनादला तर्फे गौरवण्यात येतं वकील गौरव पुरस्कार देऊन महाराष्ट्रामधून असा एक पुरस्कार वकील गौरव पुरस्कार म्हणून दिला जातो हा खूप सध्या प्रतिष्ठेचा पुरस्कार असा सगळ्या वकील जगतामध्ये समजला जातो संस्थेचं वेगळ्या स्वरूपात काम या सगळ्या पद्धतीने चालू आहे गेल्या अठरा एप्रिलला लेक्चर सिरीज पुण्यामध्ये सर्वप्रथम जनादल संस्थेने सुरू केली आणि त्याला चांगला प्रतिसाद आपल्याला सगळ्याला मिळतोय लॉकडाऊनच्या काळामध्ये आपण सगळेच एका अर्थाने तसं घरी असलो तरी त्रासलेलंच होतो परंतु पुन्हा एकदा खूप चांगल्या सिनियर मंडळींचं खूप चांगल्या या सगळ्या अभ्यासातून आपल्याला सगळ्यांना शिकायला मिळतंय याच्या खूप चांगल्या प्रतिक्रिया जनादल संस्थेकडे आलेल्या आहेत निंबाळकर सर आता जॉईन झालेले आहेत मी आपला जास्त वेळ घेणार नाही निंबाळकर सर आपलं स्वागत संस्थेतर्फे आवाज येतोय सर हो येतोय येतोय सर आपलं स्वागत येस 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 आता सर इथे काही सरस जॉईन झालेले आहेत आपल्या क्लासरूम मध्ये किसाबच्या आणि युट्यूबलाही बरेच जण जॉईन झालेले आहेत मी पुढची सूत्र जी आहेत ती आपल्या राणीताईकडे मी सुपूर्त करतो बरं राणी मॅडम आवाज येतोय का राणीताई हॅलो हो तर डिस्कनेक्ट झालं एक मिनिट राणीताई आवाज येतोय का ऍडव्होकेट राणी कांबळे मॅडम थोडा डिस्कनेक्ट झाला तर येत आहेत थोडं जरा टेक्निकल अडचणीमुळे थोडा त्रास झालेला आहे त्या दोन मिनिटांमध्ये जॉईन होतील आपल्या सगळ्यांना सांगायला हरकत नाही एकवीसावं लेक्चर आज आहे म्हणजे खूप कमी वेळेमध्ये आपल्याला एकवीस एकवीस सत्र आपल्याला घेता आली खरं तर आणि खूप सिनियर मंडळींचं मार्गदर्शन या सगळ्या सत्रांमध्ये आपल्याला लावलं अजूनही आपला असा प्रयत्न राहील की जवळपास एक दहा ते बारा सत्र कशी होतील साधारण तीस मे पर्यंत असा आपला प्रयत्न असणार आहे आणि याचा सगळ्यात जास्तीत जास्त लाभ सगळ्या वकिलांना होतोय खूप चांगल्या प्रतिक्रिया आहेत अनेक जिल्ह्यांमध्ये सुद्धा ऑनलाईन लेक्चर सिरीज सुरू झालेल्या आहेत त्यामुळे खरंच खूप छान म्हणजे अक्षरशः लोक सकाळी वाट पाहत असतात की कुठल्या लिंक्स येतात कुठल्या वेळेस कुठलं सत्र अटेंड करावं लागणार आहे वगैरे वगैरे त्यामुळे अनेक सत्र लोकांना ऐकता येत आहेत त्यामुळे खूप चांगलं असं हे सगळं वकिलांमध्ये वातावरण आहे सगळीकडे आणि आपणही जास्तीत जास्त सत्र कसे होतील असा प्रयत्न पुण्यामधून करूयात ऍडव्होकेट हर्षद निंबाळकर सरांना आपण सगळे ओळखतो सरांचं अनेक वेळा आपण या सगळ्या फौजदारी आणि या सगळ्या विषय वेगवेगळ्या विषयात सरांचं मार्गदर्शन आपण वकिलांनी घेतलेलं आहे आज सरांनी पुन्हा एकदा आपल्यासाठी वेळ काढलेला आहे मध्यंतरी एक तीन ते चार दिवसापूर्वी बार काउन्सिल ऑफ महाराष्ट्र आणि गोवाच्या जे काही आता सगळे लेक्चर सिरीज सुरू आहे त्यामध्ये सुद्धा सरांनी याच विषयावरती खूप छान मार्गदर्शन केलं 
आणि त्यालाही भरपूर मायामध्ये साडेआठशे नऊशे सगळे पार्टिसिपंट या सगळ्याच्या मध्ये जॉईन झाले होते आणि खूप चांगले ठिकठिकाणी असं सगळं वकिलांचं एका अर्थाने प्रशिक्षण व्हावं अशी सगळी प्रक्रिया सगळी सुरू आहे बार काउन्सिलचे गेल्या सात आठ वर्षापासून हा सगळा सगळा हे प्रक्रिया सगळी चालू आहे आणि खूप ग्रामीण भागातले वकील मंडळी असतील आणि या सगळ्यांना खरं तर खूप ज्युनियर्स मंडळी असतील की ज्यांना खऱ्या अर्थाने ट्रेनिंग किंवा असे काही या सगळ्या गरजे गोष्टींची गरज असते आणि ही गरज या सगळ्या याच्यातून भागतीये बार काउन्सिलचे अध्यक्ष ऍडव्होकेट माननीय आपले सुभाष श्री घाडगे सर यांनी या सगळ्या याच्यातून आपल्याला माहिती दिली की कशा सगळ्या प्रपोज सगळ्या गोष्टी या सगळ्या असणार आहेत की कशा पद्धतीनं वकिलांचं सगळं अपग्रेडेशन करण्यासाठी आणि या सगळ्या याच्यातून लिगल फॅक्टी मध्ये काय काय करता येऊ शकतं चांगल्या पद्धतीने असा सगळा प्रयत्न या सगळ्यांचा असणार आहे सगळे ऍक्टिव्ह मेंबर्स बार काउन्सिलमध्ये आहेत निंबाळकर सर पूर्वी सरांनी काम केलेलं आहे बार काउन्सिलमध्ये आजही ते सदस्य म्हणून काम करतात खूप चांगल्या पद्धतीने काम करतात आणि त्यामुळे आज सर लाभले मी पुन्हा एकदा सरांचं जनादला संस्थेतर्फे स्वागत करतोय राणीताई आता आलेल्या आहेत मी पुढची सगळी सूत्र जी आहेत ती राणीताईकडे सुपूर्त करतो राणीताई काम थँक्यू सागर सर मी ऍडव्होकेट हर्षद निंबाळकर सरांचं स्वागत करते थँक्यू सर फॉर कमिंग हर्षद निंबाळकर सरांना आपण सर्व चांगले ओळखतच आहोत पण कार्यक्रमाचा भाग म्हणून मी निंबाळकर सरांची थोडक्यात आपल्याला परिचय देते ऍडव्होकेट हर्षद वसंतराव निंबाळकर सर हे महाराष्ट्रातील प्रसिद्ध फौजदारी वकिलामधील प्रसिद्ध नाव आहे सरांनी एकोणीसशे चौऱ्याऐंशी पासून वकिलीला सुरुवात केली सरांनी फौजदारीचे वकील प्राख्यात वकील कैलास वसे ऍडव्होकेट विजयराव मोहिते सरांकडे ज्युनियर म्हणून काम करण्यास सुरुवात केली अल्पावधीतच सरांनी ऍडव्होकेट विराज काकडे यांच्या समोर समवेत स्वतंत्रपणे वकिली व्यवसाय करण्यास सुरुवात केली आणि लगेच अल्पावधीतच ही जोडी प्राख्यात फौजदारी वकील म्हणून नावारूपाला आली महाराष्ट्रात तसेच महाराष्ट्राबाहेरही सरांनी खूप कामे केलेली आहेत सर्वोच्च न्यायालयात प्राख्यात जिंदा सुखाच्या खटल्यात ज्युनियर असतानाही सरांनी अमिकस क्युरी म्हणून प्रभावीपणे काम केले होते त्यासाठी जस्टिस अहमद यांनी सदर निकाल पत्रात निंबाळकर सरांचे कौतुक केले होते सदरचा निकाल हा रिपोर्टेड आहे हर्षद निंबाळकर सरांनी बार काउन्सिल ऑफ महाराष्ट्राचे सदस्य म्हणून तीन वेळा तीन वेळा निवडून जाण्याचा विक्रम केलेला आहे हॅट्रिक केलेली आहे सरांनी पुणे बारचे अध्यक्षपद तसेच बार काउन्सिलचेही दोन वेळा अध्यक्षपद भूषवले आहे वकिलांच्या मदतीला अर्ध्या वकिलांच्या मदतीला अर्ध्या रात्री धावून जाणारे अतिशय सावकाशपणे पण सौम्यपणे संवाद साधणारे सतत चेहऱ्यावर हास्य असणारे आनंदी असणारे ज्यांचा वकिलांना अभिमान वाटतो असे लोकप्रिय व्यक्तिमत्व म्हणजे हर्षद निंबाळकर सर सर उत्तम वक्ता उत्तम क्रिकेटपटू उत्तम प्राध्यापक आहेत हर्षद निंबाळकर सर टिळक महाराष्ट्र विद्यापीठाचे लॉ फॅकल्टीचे विद्यमान डीन आहे अलीकडेच गाजलेल्या नैना पडकर पुजारी खटल्यात खटल्यात सरांची विशेष सरकारी वकील म्हणून नेमणूक झाली होती सरांनी सदर आरोपींना फाशीच्या शिक्षेपर्यंत पोहोचवले होते असे सर्वांचे लाडके लोकप्रिय व्यक्तिमत्व म्हणजे हर्षद निंबाळकर सर मी माननीय हर्षद निंबाळकर सरांना विनंती करते की त्यांनी आम्हाला डिफेन्सेस इन क्रिमिनल ट्रायल या विषयावर मार्गदर्शन करा थँक्यू सर गुड इव्हनिंग फ्रेंड्स माय फ्रेंड सागर नेवसे ऍडव्होकेट राणी कांबळे ऑल अदर ऑफिस बेअर्स ऑफ द जन अदालत संस्था सिनियर अँड ज्युनियर ऍडव्होकेट्स लेडीज अँड जेंटलमॅन इट गिव्ह मी इमेन्स प्लेजर टू बी विथ ऑल ऑफ यू दिस इव्हनिंग द सब्जेक्ट दॅट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज डिफेन्सेस इन क्रिमिनल ट्रायल नाव ऑल ऑफ यू आर प्रॅक्टिसिंग ऍडव्होकेट्स यू मस्ट हॅव कंडक्टेड सम सेशन केसेस ऑर सेशन ट्रायल आयदर ऑन युअर ओन ऑर अलॉंग विथ युअर सिनियर अँड देर फोर यू आर हॅव्हिंग certain knowledge about uh, this criminal trials now i am not your teacher and you are not my students we all are students of law i firmly believe that all of our all of us are students of law and uh, uh, we will remain students of law till the till the end till we actually die and therefore we are just going to discuss this topic it is only that because of some experience i have been in a position to deal with such type of cases uh, more often uh, before we actually begin with this topic uh, all of you must be knowing that there are two types of cases criminal cases one instituted upon a police report and one instituted otherwise than on police report 
the cases that are instituted otherwise than on police report in normal parlance we call them as criminal uh, private criminal case that is the cases which are directly filed before the magistrate sometimes the police do not take cognizance of the uh, offense and one has to go before the magistrate and uh, present his case before the magistrate after such a case is presented the magistrate uh, try to find out whether there is a prima facie case or not and if there is a prima facie case and if the ingredients of the offense are made out from the averments of the complaint then the magistrate may proceed to issue process under section 204 of the criminal procedure code the magistrate may also postpone the issuance of process under section 202 of the criminal procedure code and ask the complainant to examine himself on oath or ask him to uh, examine his uh, witnesses so on and so forth but today we are strictly not going to uh, discuss in respect of these private cases we are going to discuss on the cases instituted upon a police report that is what we now call in normal parlance as police case now what is police case now any person who is having any knowledge about any incident or who has actually seen the witness, uh, incident who is an eye witness he can go to the police station and give the information in respect of the incident to the officer in charge of the police station now it is the duty of the officer in charge of the police station to reduce it in writing on a piece of paper either he himself reduces into writing or he asks his subordinate officer to reduce it into writing after it is reduced into writing it is read over to the informant that is the complainant his signature is obtained on the complaint and the copy of the complaint is given to him free of cost thereafter the officer in charge of the police station it is his duty to take down the information in a special register maintained in the police station as per the direction of the state government the gist of the information is taken down in that notebook which we call as the first information report after the first information report is registered then the investigating officer or the police officer he starts investigating the case now first he may go to the spot of the incident he sees for himself as to what is there at the spot he has to call to independent persons as panchas in their presence everything is written down in the panchanama the measurements are taken the lengths the breadth the distances everything is mentioned in the panchanama if there are any incriminating articles on the spot then those incriminating articles are seized and the mention of that is also done in the panchanama for example if uh, there is there are blood stains on the spot of the incident there are blood stain clothes sometimes there is a piece of uh, uh, piece of cloth which can be stained with blood then uh, chappals etc of the accuse of the witness of the disease might be lying on the spot of the incident sometimes some weapon is kept uh, is there in the on the on the spot he has to seize all these uh, articles which are incriminating and mention about it in the panchanama if it is a case of death or murder then he has to carry out inquest panchanama of the dead body inquest panchanama means all the uh, the injuries on the person of the dead body are mentioned in the panchanama uh, if it is a lady who has died then one lady pancha also has to be called otherwise both the panchas are jeans panchas and uh, uh, inquest panchanama is drawn if uh, then thereafter the uh, dead body is sent for post mortem in the civil hospital or the general hospital 
and uh, the investigating officer has to collect these post-mortem notes. If it is a case under section 325, 326, 324 or 307 where uh, death has not occurred, then uh, he has to send the injured to the uh, hospital for medical examination. The injury certificates are uh, collected by the investigating officer. Then uh, he has to find out whether there are any eyewitnesses to the incident on the spot from the complainant. He has to record the statements of the eyewitnesses under section 161 of the criminal procedure code. Or if there are other witnesses, some witnesses are on the point of motive, some are on the point of last seen together, some may be on the point of extrajudicial confession, etc. So uh, statements of all these witnesses has to be taken down by the investigating officer. Then accused has to be arrested. Uh, if at the time of arrest, he is having some uh, bloodstained clothes, they are to be seized. Or any incriminating article is with him, it has to be seized. The panchanama has to be prepared. Then, whilst in police custody, he makes a statement that he is ready to produce the weapons that he has used at the time of the incident. Or he is ready to produce the clothes which he was wearing at the time of the incident. And therefore, the memorandum statement of the accused is taken down in the presence of the panchas and thereafter the accused leads the panchas and the police to the place where we, he has actually concealed the weapons or the clothes. Those are seized. The panchanama under section 27 of the Indian Evidence Act is recorded. Uh, all these incriminating articles are sent to the chemical analyzer for the chemical analysis. The chemical analysis report is thereafter collected by the investigating officer. So all this investigation uh, is done by the police officer. And after he has satisfied that there is sufficient evidence collected against the accused, then he files the charge sheet in the court of the magistrate. Now, the magistrate is duty bound to supply the copy of the charge sheet to each of the accused, free of cost. Now, if it is a case which is tribal by the court of magistrate, then the magistrate uh, proceeds to frame charge against the accused. After the charge is framed, then the trial begins. If it is a case which is tribal by the court of sessions, as you know, murder case, attempted murder case, rape, decoity, etc., then the magistrate commits the case to the court of sessions. After it is committed to the court of sessions, then the sessions judge, he uh, proceeds to frame charge against the accused. If the accused files an application for discharge, the discharge application is heard or thereafter charge is framed. In almost all the cases, the accused pleads not guilty and thereafter the actual trial starts. Now, in a session's trial or in the trial before the magistrate, it is the public prosecutor who is in charge of the case. It is he who conducts the prosecution. And uh, it is the sweet choice of the public prosecutor as to who, which witness has to be examined uh, 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 and which witness has to be examined first. So the order of sequence of the examination of witnesses has to be decided by the public prosecutor alone. It is his sweet choice. Now, the examination in chief is conducted by the public prosecutor and the cross-examination is conducted by the counsel for the defense. Now, cross-examination is very important and, of course, we will come to uh, it later on. But then, this is the... Uh, after the entire evidence of the prosecution is over, then the court calls upon the accused to answer the queries uh, which are incriminating against him. Uh, and as per the provisions of Section 313 of the Criminal Procedure Code, all that evidence which is incriminating against the accused is put to him and his explanation is sought for. Thereafter, 
uh, the judge also asked him whether he wants to examine himself on oath, whether he wants to examine any witness in his defense, or whether he wants to state anything else. And then he can explain certain things uh, in respect of the case in general. So uh, this, after the statement of the accused is recorded, then both the sides argue, the prosecution as well as the defense. And then the learned judge passes the judgment. So this is the procedure in case of session trial or criminal trial. Now, if an accused comes to you to engage your services to defend him, what do you do? Ask the question again, and the prosecutrix uh, gave the entire explanation of how the uh, incident unfolded, and therefore, uh, what was not supposed to be asked in cross examination was asked by that advocate, and he suffered the consequences. I mean, I I, I, should, I, I will not take the name of that advocate, but later on he had become judge. A magistrate. He did not remain for a long time because he was removed. But then such things should be avoided during cross examination. Now, in a, what are what are the defenses that are normally taken in a criminal trial? Uh, the most important defense that is normally taken uh, in a criminal trial is that of total denial. Total denial is the best defense because it is the prosecution which has the case beyond reasonable doubt. As I have already told you, that the burden to prove a case is always on the prosecution. And the burden of proof is quite high. In a civil case, mere preponderance of probability is sufficient. But in a criminal case, a higher degree of assurance is required. And therefore, so also the accused is entitled to the benefit of doubt. And therefore, the best defense that can be taken is that of total denial. Now, what is the defense of total denial? Now, if there are eyewitnesses to the incident, if there is direct evidence, then uh, that he or she is not eyewitness to the incident. They have not seen the incident. They were not present at the spot, at the time of the incident. They are just uh, uh, deposing because they are inimical to the accused or they are interested witnesses. Uh, they uh, are, they, uh, for some uh, particular reason, they are deposing against the accused, so on and so forth. So, uh, where cases where there are eyewitnesses, you take defense of total denial. 
there are other types of cases where there is no direct evidence available and the only evidence available is circumstantial in nature see in number of heinous crimes the only evidence obtainable is circumstantial evidence take uh, many cases manjushi sarda और जोशी अभ्यंकर केस नैना पुजारी रेस्टिंग ऑन सर्कमस्टैंशियल एविडन्स द बर्डन ऑन द प्रोसिक्यूशन इज इवन हायर बिकॉज इन सर्कमस्टैंशियल केसेस नॉट ओनली द प्रोसिक्यूशन हैज टू प्रूव ईच एंड एवरी सर्कमस्टेंस ऑन विच इट रिलाइज बट ऑल दिस सर्कमस्टेंसेस शुड फॉर्म अ चेंज सो कंप्लीट दैट द ओनली इन्फ्लुएंस that can be drawn should be that of the guilt of the accused and it should it should be incompatible with the innocence of the accused and therefore uh, in circumstantial uh, cases cases resting on circumstantial evidence the burden on the prosecution is higher and therefore denial is the best defense in such type of cases so what are the circumstances on which the prosecution normally rely that is motive then uh, last seen together extra judicial confession dying declaration uh, the panchanamas that is recovery panchanama or the discovery panchanama under section 27 where the accused discovers clothes or weapons which were which he has used at the time of the incident so on and so forth so you have to deny that there was The accused had any motive to commit offence. You have to deny that he has given any extrajudicial confession to a particular witness. You have to deny that uh, he was last seen along with the uh, disease. Of course, you can also ask that there was a time gap, a long time in between the point when the accused was last seen with the uh, disease and uh, uh, the time of death, so on and so forth. but then denying all the circumstances that the accused made a statement that is ready to discover the weapons from his house and then he led the panchayat and police to his house and discovered the uh, articles from uh, below the earthen pot from his house and uh, uh, so on and so forth so uh, denial is the best defense uh, even, even in circumstantial evidence now apart from denial in a criminal trial the accused can also take an alternative defense now this is available only in uh, criminal cases why this is available in a criminal case because the accused is not bound by his pleadings in a civil case the parties are bound by their pleadings but in uh, criminal case the accused are not bound uh, by their pleadings for example even if the accused takes a particular defense at the time of say the bail application if you take the defense of alibi it is not necessary that the same defense should be taken at the time of trial you can take a different defense you can take the defense of total denial or whatever not only that but even the accused can change the defense during trial uh, for example if at the time of cross examining the first witness the accused gives suggestion takes a particular defense and gives the suggestions in accordance with that defense and when the other witness is examined if during cross examination he gets some admissions on different point then he can give different set of suggestions to that witness and therefore during the course of the trial also an accused can change the defense this can be done uh, in a uh, uh, criminal trial alone and therefore you can take different defenses you can change defenses uh, during a criminal trial now i told you that along with the uh, defense an alternate defense can be taken by the 
accused. Now, what are these alternative defense? This, there are a number of alternative design, like right of private defense, grave and sudden provocation, intention not to commit murder, or one of the ex exceptions to section 300, so on and so forth. These All these defenses, to which we are going to deal with later on, can be directly taken, positively taken, or can also be taken as alternative defenses. Now, in respect of alternative defenses, the accused may take the alternate defense, or even the court may gather the attending circumstances. That is very important. In number of cases, even if the accused doesn't take that defense, but if the court feels from the circumstances on record that yes, this defense is available to the accused, the court can gather it from these attending circumstances. Now, the best example in case of alternative defense is in respect of a rape case. Now, in a rape case, normally you take a defense of total denial. You deny that the accused had committed rape on the prosecutrix or he had committed sexual intercourse uh, <clears throat> uh, without her consent, etc., uh, etc. Et but in the cross-examination, you develop the theory of consent. So consent is an alternative defense in a rape case. <clears throat> in number of cases, during cross-examination, you can develop this consent. Now, uh, you know about the famous judgment in Vardarajan's case, in which the Supreme Court has held that if the boy and girl know what is good and what is bad for them, then in such cases, it appears that uh, the girl was a consenting party. After all, if both of them are major, number of cases in the love affairs are there. And uh, thereafter, uh, the, uh, the, the girl elopes with the boy. Later on, she's, uh, after they are found, the family members of the girl pressurize the girl and she lodges a complaint of abduction and rape against the boy. Or sometimes the boy promises to marry her does not marry her, then she may file a complaint uh, of rape against the boy. Or nowadays there are living relationships in which they stay together without marriage, but there may be uh, differences between them uh, because of some financial uh, difficulties, etc. And they thereafter uh, separate from each other and a complaint for rape may be filed by the lady. So. In all these cases, uh, the theory of consent is developed during cross-examination. Now, as I told you, you need to take instructions from the client. Now, in these love affairs, etc., there are a number of photographs, cheats are exchanged, or there are messages uh, exchanged on WhatsApp, SMSs, etc. You take instructions, uh, and accordingly, you can prove that during the cross-examination. And the court can gather from the cross-examination from attending circumstances that it is a case of consent and therefore the accused can get acquitted and therefore these are this is uh, uh, this consent can be a very good alternate defense during the trial then what are the stages when we when these defenses can be taken now first stage is during cross-examination when the actual questions are put to the witness the second stage is when the suggestions are put in the end of the cross-examination, you put up your case to the witness by far, by far, by putting the suggestions, the case is put to the witness. That is the time when you take your defense. The third stage is during the 313 statement, when the judge asks questions to the accused and asks explanation from him. That time he can uh, uh, put up his defense. And the fourth is when... Uh, you actually examine uh, defense witnesses uh, after the uh, statement under 313 is over. And therefore, you can examine uh, witnesses in defense. That is when you take this uh, particular defense. So these are the stages when you take defense. Now, uh, let us go to the next defense. The next defense which is available to the accused is right of private defense. Now, this right of private defense can either be 
directly taken positively or it can be gathered by the court from attending circumstances of course there should be circumstances on the record to take this defense bare words are not sufficient some corroboration direct or indirect uh, uh, is required to take this defense now for example if uh, uh, there are injuries on the person of the accused or if there are counter cases or cross cases as uh, we say then this defense can be taken uh, remember the right of private defense can be taken by the accused directly with regard to one's body and with regards to one's property now if there is imminent danger of death then the accused can cause bodily injury he can also go to the extent of causing death uh, as long as the danger is there the right to private defense exists so such defense can be taken in number of cases uh, provided there are circumstances accordingly on the record uh, i will give you an example but then uh, what is important is burden to prove this defense is on the accused so if the accused takes a right of private defense the burden to show that this right that he had the uh, right of self defense that burden has to be proved by the accused but still the burden to prove the entire case is on the prosecution and this burden when accused takes a particular plea the uh, onus shifts on the accused to prove that particular plea but that burden is not as hard as the burden on the prosecution that burden is like a civil case preponderance of probability whereas the burden on the prosecution is absolute burden yeah, prosecution has to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt now i will give you an example uh, i was conducting a case at baramati there were cross cases the accused whom i was defending were facing a trial under section 302 and the case in which we were the complainants that was under section 326 of the ip code now when there are cross cases or counter cases both the cases have to be heard by the same judge both the cases are committed to the court of session even if one case is not a trial by the court of session still being counter case or cross case it is also committed to the court of session like in our case the case in which we were complainants it was under section 326 both the cases are heard simultaneously or one after the other by the same judge the arguments are heard one after the other by the same judge and the judgment is delivered one after the other on the same day by the same judge now in that case uh, the prosecution case was that the land of the accused and the land of the complainant were next to each other and according to the prosecution the accused there was a common road uh, to go to the land of the accused there was a road a cart road going to the land of the accused according to the prosecution that road was belonging to the prosecution witnesses and according to the accused it was a common road there was a civil litigation pending and the civil court had given injunction in favor of the accused party uh, the only thing is that the civil court had uh, held that if the accused party wants to go to their land they need to inform the police station about it on the earlier day now the prosecution story was that on the day of the incident the accused were armed with weapons and they were going by the tractor from that cart road and having come there on the cart road this was the complainant and all the witnesses who were working in the field they started abusing the complainant and the witnesses cut down from the tractor they were carrying weapons 
and they assaulted the complainant party with those weapons due to which the disease died and the uh, complainant and other witnesses were injured the defense of the accused was that they had standing sugarcane crop in their field they wanted to cut the sugarcane crop and therefore they had intimated the police station on the earlier day in the evening they were going by that cart road which was the common road they were having some workers in the uh, sitting in the trailer of the tractor they had some weapons with them to cut the sugarcane which is like a uh, satur which is used in that side baramati in the upper side and uh, while they were so going the complainant and the disease and the other witnesses they got angry they were aggrieved because the uh, civil court order was against them they stopped the tractor they started giving abuses after some exchange of abuses they pulled the accused persons from the tractor they had axes and sticks in their hands they started assaulting the accused persons the accused were trying to protect themselves they were uh, under the uh, right of private defense they were defending themselves the other persons who who uh, the workers who were accompanying them also tried to uh, protect the accused persons from the assault which was being uh, done by the complainant party and while they were uh, uh, defending themselves the disease and the complainant and might have received injuries that was their defense now of course accordingly you have, uh, you have to cross examine the witnesses we had cross examine the doctors and brought on record that the injuries on the person of the accused were possible due to uh, access and sticks now the prosecution witness had not stated a word about the injuries on the person of the accused but there were injuries on the person of the accused we proved those medical certificates what those proved from the doctor and as and got from the doctor that those are possible due to accent sticks so also the injuries on the person of the disease were possible due to that weapon like satur which was with the workers who were not accused but who were also protecting us from the assault by the prosecution party and therefore uh, having cross examined the witnesses we could argue it i could argue it uh, at the time of the arguments and the uh, judge uh, believed uh, the uh, defense which was taken by the accused and we were acquitted from the trial it's 5 o'clock and therefore if the defense is borne out from the facts of the case then the court would believe it there were two versions two parallel versions one by the prosecution and one by the defense and the defense has merely to show that their version is probable on the touchstone of probabilities and therefore uh, i could show that the defense version was probable from the attending circumstances and therefore uh, the defense was accepted and the accused were acquitted now let us go to another defense that is alibi now uh, uh, alibi means the accused is not present at the spot and is present somewhere else at the time of the incident he is not present at the spot now the burden is on the uh, accused to show that he was not present at the spot and was present somewhere else now uh, accused has to show, show that absolutely he cannot be present at the spot physically so if there is documentary evidence if there are some contemporaneous documents it always helps for example if the accused is admitted in a hospital he is in jail or he is in some government office then he can uh, produce the document and uh, show that um, well he was not present at the place of the incident uh, although the burden to prove alibi is on the accused but the burden to prove the entire case still rests on the prosecution nowadays of course there are cctv uh, cameras etc and therefore the accused can show from the cctv camera that he was not present at the spot of incident but by and large if there is documentary evidence then it normally is 
I'll again give you an example. We were conducting a very famous case at Sholapur. Uh, there were two gangs. One uh, gang was of the MLA from that place. MLA from a place called Indi, which is one hour's drive from Sholapur. But that MLA was staying in Sholapur. He, his brother and seven others were accused in a murder case. They had murdered the person from the rival gang. Uh, the prosecution case was that on the day of the incident, the disease was sitting on the uh, uh, ota of his house, or rather katta in front of his house, abutting the road. And he was sitting along with the other eyewitnesses, the other rival gang members. They were chit-chatting. Two accused came on a motorcycle. The brother of the MLA was principal accused, was the pillion rider. The, uh, and they were followed by a Maruti van in which the other accused were there. The motorcycle stopped momentarily where the disease was sitting. The pillion rider shot at the disease from a close range from his uh, revolver and they went away. The disease collapsed and died on the spot. The other persons in the, who were following in the Maruti van, they stopped in the choke and entered a hotel come uh, shop of the member from the rival gang and ransacked the hotel and fled away. So that was the case of the prosecution. Uh, at the trial, the prosecution had examined three to four witnesses, eyewitnesses who were along with the disease. Now we had cross-examined them on various points, conduct on the, uh, uh, some omissions, contradictions were brought on record on the point of medical evidence, etc. They were cross-examined uh, by us. But three accused had taken the plea of alibi. One accused had taken the plea that at that time he was at Pune and he was in the office of the Food Corporation of India where he had signed the document, etc. Uh, we brought that document on record and uh, tried to prove the alibi in the court. The second accused had taken a defense that at that time he was at Hyderabad. He stayed in a uh, hotel in Hyderabad. We actually went there and uh, checked the register, etc. in the hotel at Hyderabad. And at that time he had also uh, gone to a doctor and taken medicines because he was suffering from loose motions. He had that prescription, etc. Now we prove uh, uh, one defense was uh, witness examined. We proved the uh, uh, register, etc., and also the uh, medical prescription was produced by us in the court. The third accused had taken a very interesting defense. He had said that he was in his native place at Indi, the brother of the MLA, uh, at the relevant time. And on the day of the incident, he had given bail in the magistrate court at Indi. There was a pending case against him under 324. Warrant was issued. Therefore, he cancelled the warrant and uh, gave uh, sureties in the court on that day. We had examined the police prosecutor who had given say to the bail application and also the clerk of the court. Now, although we gave evidence in defense in respect of alibi, the learned judge discarded all the three alibis in the judgment. Even in respect of uh, the principal accused presence in the court at Indy, the learned judge gave a finding that he might be here at the place of incident at 1 or 1.10 p.m. when the incident occurred in the afternoon and thereafter gone to Indy and given bail at 3 o'clock. During those days, 2.30 to 3 was the recess and his advocate must have given the uh, application in the morning, the sureties must have filled the form earlier and at 3 o'clock he, he might have given the bail. And therefore, accused was not in a position to show that absolutely he cannot be present at the place of the incident at the time of the incident. Therefore, he could be present at both the places was what the court held and discarded the alibi. But even then the court acquitted all the nine accused. Why? Because prosecution failed to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt. The eyewitnesses, 
through cross examination we were in a po position to point out that the eye witnesses are lying they were not present at the time of the incident they are enemical witnesses being from the rival gang and therefore they uh, were uh, 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 telling uh, not telling the truth during trial their statements were delayed statement after 2 3 days they had given the statement to the police their conduct was unnatural uh, and the uh, medical evidence uh, was in variance with the ocular evidence we could from the doctor we cross examine of course we cross examine the doctor and brought on the record that this uh, firing was from a long distance and not from close distance as was the case of the prosecution witnesses so also uh, the projector uh, pro the uh, the way in which the bullet was fired it was fired uh, in a in, in, in a different projectile all that we brought on recording cross examination and therefore since the eye witnesses were discarded the accused were acquitted in that therefore even though the plea of alibi they to uh, to uh, towards the accused the accused has to prove the alibi but even if the accused do not prove their defense or their plea the prosecution is not absolved of its duty to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt supreme court says that even if the plea taken by the accused is palpably false till the prosecution cannot take advantage of it they have to stand firmly on their legs and prove the case beyond reasonable doubt another defense that can be taken is that of insanity insanity means the accused is of unsound mind now uh, uh, here also the burden is on the accused to show that at the time of the incident he was of unsound mind the medical evidence is quite important in such type of cases of course the court uh, considers the behavior of the accused before the incident at the time of the incident and after the incident now i will give you an, again an example i was conducting a session case at satara it was a murder case under 302 the uh, prosecution case was that the disease was sitting on the uh, ota of the uh, temple in a village it was a case from a village the accused came out from his house armed with an axe he went to and fro in that lane suddenly went near the temple and assaulted the disease on his head the disease fell in a pool of blood he ran away shouting that i have killed the disease he deserved death and uh, after uh, going around the village shouting he went to the police station got himself arrested at the trial at the time of charge he had pleaded not guilty thereafter all the witnesses were examined and it was a defense of total denial but at time of the statement under 313 He told the court, "Chamber where I sang it, lana meets marla. You know, hundred times I am telling you, I have assaulted, I have killed the disease. So uh, suddenly he came, uh, he, he uh, started uh, saying that I have killed. Now after the statement under three hundred and thirteen, the arguments of both the sides were heard, and the judge convicted the accused, sentenced sentenced him to death. Death penalty was given. He went in appeal in the high court. The since it was death sentence. it uh, also goes to the high court for confirmation of the death sentence now when i was arguing in the high court i pointed out to the court that my lords there is a disease called schizophrenia in that disease a person is appears to be normal at a given point of time and at a, and at other point he appears totally abnormal does certain things uh, which he doesn't know the consequences of those things he doesn't understand what he is doing and therefore this was about of schizophrenia when he has committed this offense even at the time of statement he suddenly says that uh, he has killed and earlier he never said that he had killed the disease so on and so forth and the honorable high court remanded the case back to the court of sessions and asked the uh, session judge to record again afresh the statement under 313 of the accused and to hear the arguments afresh now again we came back to the session court statements were recorded arguments were advanced then the judge uh, sentenced him to life imprisonment from death sentence he was sentenced to life imprisonment again we went in appeal in the high court and again 
I was trying to argue in the high court. The other other bench was there because number of years had passed, and I was trying to try trying to point out to the court that this was a bout of schizophrenia. He used to be normal at certain point of time, used to be abnormal certain point of time. Although there was no medical evidence which we had on the record, he had uh, history. He had shown to some Ayurvedic doctor, but he had not given the instructions to me at uh, before the trial, and therefore. nothing was brought during trial uh, so far as medical evidence is concerned now when i was arguing before the high court in respect of this uh, defense of insanity and especially schizophrenia the high court suddenly uh, said uh, uh, wait a while stop mr nimbarkar we uh, stop uh, forget schizophrenia we are reducing the sentence of the accused we are changing the conviction from Uh, uh life sent uh, imprisonment for life to imprisonment for 7 years because his intention was not to commit murder and therefore we convicting him under section 304 so from 302 we are altering the conviction to 304 ipc and uh, sir for 7 years imprisonment was given and within uh, he was already in jail for more than 5 years within one or one and a half year he came out and therefore all these things are, may happen after all the luck of the client is also very important but you have to try uh, your best and try to take defenses which are uh, borne out from the facts of the case and cross examine the witness in line with the defense that is uh, very important earl uh, jovit uh, former lord chancellor of england he said that it is the duty of the counsel for the defense to endeavor by every legitimate means to secure his client's acquittal so by every legitimate means it is your duty to try to secure acquittal for your client that is the duty of the uh, defense counsel uh, the uh, duty of the prosecutor is different prosecutor uh, does not have to seek conviction anyhow no he has to place all the evidence before the court and after placing the evidence then he has to uh, try uh, for conviction but be fair to the other side and fair to the judge also so these are uh, uh, two uh, different roles of the prosecutor and the defense counsel now one more defense that can be available to you during trial is grave and sudden provocation now this can be directly taken or it can also be uh, uh, gathered by the court from attending circumstances now what is grave and sudden provocation grave and sudden provocation here also the burden is on the accused to show that there was grave and sudden provocation Re remember it is grave and sudden if it is merely grave not sudden then the defense may not be accepted by the court if it merely sudden and not that grave again the defense will not be accepted by the court you must be aware of the famous case of uh, nanavati's case the uh, naval officer where the supreme court has held that the defense was grave but not sudden now for example if uh, there is a time gap between the provocation and the incident then that defense will not be available uh, for you now if uh, if the husband and wife are staying together at pune and uh on the day of the incident in the evening if the husband by telling his wife goes to mumbai uh takes his baggage goes to the railway station for the evening train but he misses the train and he is supposed to go uh, to attend his friend's marriage at mumbai on the next day but then he comes back and decides to go by the early next day early morning train when he comes back home if he sees his wife along with a paramour on the bed embracing each other then it is a grave provocation if he immediately reacts and beats uh, the paramour then the uh, then the defense of grave and sudden provocation may be available to him but after for four or five hours if he goes and assaults and kills him then because of the time gap the provocation although may be grave 
but would not be sudden and therefore the defense would not be available to the uh, uh, accused in such type of case and therefore these are these are various defenses that can be taken there is also a defense of drunkenness in which the accused may be uh, not uh, may be in a drunken position and may not know the consequences of his act but then remember voluntary drunkenness is not an offense if you drink on your own and take that defense uh, in the court court may not believe it that it must be an invalid involuntary drunkenness if an accused is forced to drink or is defrauded to drink and under the influence of alcohol if he commits an offense then that defense is available to him but it is for the accused to show that it was involuntary so all these various defenses can be taken in the court either directly or even the court may gather it from attending circumstances but remember you have to cross examine the witness accordingly and uh, bring uh, your defense on record through proper cross examination uh, now in some type sometimes where kithe डिले इन लॉजिंग ऑफ द एफ आई आर एंड सो यू कैन टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ दिस डिले इन लॉजिंग ऑफ द एफ आई आर now when there is delay in lodging of the fir it is for the prosecution to properly explain the delay and the judge has to uh, believe that the delay is uh, uh, because uh, if 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 the delay uh, is a proper delay and properly explained by the prosecution the court may believe it but otherwise the defense can take advantage of this delay now uh if the accused can show that this delay has been purposely uh, uh taken by the prosecution witnesses because they were not knowing the names of the assailants and they were trying to buy time so as either to know the assailants or to concoct a false story against the accused persons then in that case you may succeed now uh sometimes the fir which is actually given at the police station may not be the first information there may be some other information which is given to the police station in respect of the same incident by some other source earlier in point to the first information report now that would be an uh, fir in the eye of law and the statement recorded as the fir would be hit by section 162 of the criminal procedure code and would not remain an fir now i was Uh, recently uh, conducting a session case at solapur it was a gruesome murder, murder there were six accused persons the six accused was merely uh, uh, involved being a conspirator but there was actual role in respect of the first five accused they were actually present at the spot the case of the prosecution was that the deceased and the, his friends the eye witnesses they were playing cards in one uh, government uh, hospital in a village near mohor taluka now that was a dilapidated hospital the hospital had shifted to a new place and therefore these this hospital there was no uh, working as such in this hospital but the jollies were using this room to play cards now on the day of the incident they were playing cards in the morning at around 10:30 or 11 the accused and the disease were enemical with each other five accused came there on the spot of the incident three of them were carrying weapons two were having swords one was having satur they had kept it uh, hiding uh, behind their clothes and they 
went near the door of that room in which they were the witnesses were playing cards they went under the pretext that they were uh, observing the game of cards now after about 4 5 minutes they suddenly started assaulting the disease all three of them two were not armed with weapon but three of them who, who were armed with weapons they assaulted the disease mercilessly the disease uh, uh, fell in a pool of blood they immediately came out from the hospital while they were coming out the prosecution case was the complainant who was the uncle of the disease was entering the hospital as he wanted to take the disease uh, for some work uh, in, uh, in in the, in the village when he was entering the hospital he saw he saw that the accused were going out having weapons in their hand and their clothes were stained with blood when he went inside he saw the disease lying in a pool of blood the eye witnesses the story of the eye witnesses was that they had left the place of the incident after the incident gone to their house one of the eye witness said that he had come uh, uh, in uh, near in the gate of the hospital after one hour was standing there at that time the complainant was also standing there at the gate of the hospital the complainant's case was that after the incident he went to the house of the disease informed the father of the disease who was his brother and came back at the gate of the hospital and was standing there now na uh, The, the complainant or that eyewitnesses do not claim that they had informed the incident to the police nobody claimed that they had in, informed the incident to the police uh, uh, the uh, police station was at mohor which was about 8 to 10 kilometers from the place of the incident however within half an hour of the incident i mean 45 minutes after the incident the police had arrived at the spot the police arrived at the spot the complainant made them one of the eyewitnesses made them but they did not tell them anything about the incident they carried carried out the panchanama of the spot of the incident uh, and uh, took the dead body of the disease took it to primary health center at mohor the complainant and the eyewitness accompanied them to the primary health center at mohor did not inform about the incident there the inquest panchanama of the uh, dead body of the disease took place the complainant identified the dead body in the hospital still no complaint nothing the police station more was just opposite to this uh, primary health center from more and thereafter in the evening at about 6:37 pm for the first time the complainant informs the police about the in about the names of the assailant and the fir is registered against six accused five who were there on the spot and six uh, conspirator and thereafter the statements of the eye witnesses are recorded one on the next day then after three days thereafter after seven days and therefore delayed statements of the eye witnesses now while i told you to read the charge sheet for at least three times i found out a small piece of paper in the charge sheet that was the a small entry in the station diary which was annexed by the police uh, and in that entry it was written that so and so person has telephoned the police station and informed about the incident to the police immediately within 15 uh, minutes of the incident and he had stated to the police that anorki lokanni maitala ya ya amuk amuk hatyaranni marle now this the same witness who had telephoned the police at the police station did not state so in his examination in chief it was not there in his police statement recorded under 161 of the criminal procedure code however there was an entry that he had informed to the police on phone now by taking help of this entry i asked him question in cross examination that look here you had informed or telephoned the police and informed that unknown persons have assaulted to which he denied i however put that suggestion to him in cross examination and de- developed the theory and gave this suggestion to every witness 
that unknown person has assaulted but because you are on inimical terms with this accused you have named them while uh, giving your statement to the police even the complainant who was inimical to this accused persons along with the disease also had named their them in the uh, fir or the complaint only because of animosity and nothing else now this station diary entry was proved by me uh, when the io came in the witness box and he had to tell about it that yes we received this information on telephone therefore it was entered in the station diary and they had arrived at the spot because of this information which was taken down in the station diary at the relevant time and that is how they had came and, uh, at the spot for uh, uh, and they do the spot panchanama there and took the dead body of the disease to the phc more and therefore from the cross examination and from the uh, uh, evidence on the record i could point out to the court that these persons are not eye witnesses to the incident even the complainant had not seen the accused while running away from the spot of the incident having blood stained clothes and weapon because had they known about it they would have immediately informed the police when the police came to the spot or at the dispensary or by going to the police station which they do not do and therefore this delay in lodging the fir and delay in recording the statements of the witnesses uh, were, was was helpful to us but we had to develop it in cross examination therefore court came to the conclusion that they have fabricated a false story and they have uh, involved the accused only because of enmity and we i could to take advantage of that fir and secondly the fir of the uncle was not an fir in law the station diary entry was the first information first in point of time it was in respect of a cognizable offense now on the basis of the cognizable offense the police started investigation and therefore the fir was also uh, it remained as a mere statement recording during the course of investigation and therefore in such cases if there is delay in lodging of the fir then you can take advantage of it and uh, the accused can get acquitted therefore you have to develop this theory in cross examination and cross examine the witnesses in line with the defense normally you what defense you take you should also write it down because you have to put the suggestions during the cross examination one more important thing is that when you take this positive defense maybe right of private defense or maybe the defense of alibi that you were not present at the spot or grave on sudden provocation or so on and so forth when the defense is taken positive defense is taken by you whether to tell it at the time of 313 statement orally or should it be given in writing many juniors come to me and ask this question as to whether it should be told orally or to be given in writing now as far as possible it should be given in writing because as i told you that the judge asks the question and then he asks the question tula shaptevar jawab daycha hai ka sakshidar tapas hai ka ani ajun kai sangaycha ka at that time you should tell about this defense to the court as to what really happened at that time and i was acting in my right of private defense etc you have to actually tell to the court but many a times the accused doesn't tell it properly he is scared while talking to the judge or uh, he uh, may sometimes forget certain things and would not tell the entire defense and therefore it is always better that it should be given in writing earlier of course there was a judgment of the supreme court that it should uh, uh, that if it is given in writing then it is as per the instructions of the advocate that he gives it in writing but then later on it has been overruled and uh, even if it if you give in writing it is held to be a valid defense even when you, it is given in writing and therefore as far as possible you see if the accused is really in a position to tell it himself or otherwise you should give it in writing so also i told you that when you take a particular defense 
you can examine witnesses for example alibi if there is documentary evidence then you examine witness and you have to prove that document uh, in the court by uh, by examining defense witness but as far as possible avoid examining defense witness only uh, examine witness in defense when it is extremely necessary when you have to prove some document etc only then you examine defense witnesses otherwise in many cases uh, you spoil your case by examining defense witnesses because after all that witness is available to the prosecution for cross examination and if he gives away certain admissions to the prosecution then uh, you may spoil your case and the prosecution case gets strengthened and therefore avoid examining witnesses in defense and if you have really if you really want to examine defense witnesses where it is at most necessary then examine minimum number of witnesses on a particular point on a particular point examine one or maximum two witnesses on another point examine one or maximum two witnesses but examine only when it is at most necessary otherwise don't examine witnesses in defense now this is all that we had to discuss today in respect of defenses uh, that can be taken up in a criminal trial but uh, remember friends that when you conduct a case a criminal trial or a session trial you have to work hard especially those who are juniors during the initial uh, years you have to really work hard now i will end my speech by telling you about 3 c's and 3 h's when i was uh, a junior uh, one of my colleagues had told me that there are three ways to get an order or a judgment in your favor he told me about 3 c's the first was to convince the judge he said if you cannot convince the judge you confuse the judge if you cannot confuse the judge you corrupt the judge but after my practice i realized that uh, the sec- the third c is uh, the worst c you should never uh, corrupt a judge because if you corrupt a judge then you not only you corrupt the entire legal and judicial system but you also corrupt yourself and the judge will you will not get the discretion from the judge the uh, Uh, you lose the court you lose your colleagues and it will be of no use whatsoever so also do not confuse the judge if you confuse the judge then a confused judge will give a confused judgment or a confused order which will which may not be in your favor and in any case you may not win uh, uh, the case in appeal but try to convince the judge the first c is very important uh, convince the judge but to convince the judge you have to work really hard and uh, 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 by sheer hard work and uh, determination you would be in a position to convince the judge but you always remember 3 h's 3 h's are very important the first h is honesty honesty is a great virtue be honest to your client be honest to your brief be honest to the judge be honest to the adversary and most importantly be honest to yourself second is hard work and integrity in the initial stage of your career it is only hard work that helps you and you can thereafter when you grow senior then uh, you Uh, need not work that hard but in initial stages only hard work hard work plays hard work and integrity are very important for you to become a successful lawyer and the third h is humility be humble humility is a great virtue very great virtue if you have humility at your command then in that case you will always be successful even the court's discretion will be in your favor if you got a touch of humility in you 
not only be successful in uh, your practice, but you, you will be also successful in your life. Thank you very much. With this, we complete our topic for today. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Upon Kup Sopesh of that defenses in criminal trial, Amala Samsun Sangitla, and Sagat Matwache Teen C and Teen Edge, Hemalaku Powered Lesser, they have been a kit luxury. Thank you so much, sir. Upon Yoda Verdun Amala Mulati Margaretian Kele, and I've been a kit up lesser, put a kankuru, Karmala, the age of a head, though Aplala Minami Bakhtana Pate, and he told a Caesar Sangitla, I said, to convince. The judge. They mean, but I clearly like how you convince the judge and get the result at your side. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. 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 Thanks for Internet lecture. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir. Participants love in the Samsa Konolazoka Prashna still. Upon which are Shakta, chat box, Made, upon Prashna Deu Shakta. Wi-Fi. Anybody wants to ask questions, you may ask questions. Hello? 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 You are unmuted. Now, your voice will be heard. Yes, yes, yes. You are uh, muted. Now, your voice will be heard. Who is your question? Hello. Hello. Uh, sir, one question is Bhagwan Kulkarni Saran, sir. But it's not a question. It's a question. Name in FIR, but not, not in a charge sheet. Please uh, tell something about this. If name is there in the FIR, 
name in fir but not in charge sheet okay see when the person is named in the fir thereafter police carry out investigation and after investigation if they find out that, that the accused is not concerned with the offense then it is the choice of the investigating officer to delete his name when the charge sheet is filed so there are four five five accused for example and if they come to know that one accused is not concerned with the offense and accordingly uh, they uh, they, uh, they find out that only four accused have committed the offense and therefore while filing the charge sheet they are within their right to delete the name of the one of the accused and therefore his name is deleted from the charge sheet because after all it is for the investigating agency to find out the truth and then file charge sheet only against those who are actually committed wrong according to them thank you sir next question is in a rape case where the dean dna matches of the child with the accused but the complainant and victim are not found from the date of trial what best defense can be obtained see in any criminal case unless and until witness comes and deposes in the witness box in evidence the unless and until oral evidence is given in the witness box it doesn't amount to be or amount to an evidence by which the accused can be convicted so the witness has to be available even if dna is there that would be available for corroboration the witness has to come in the witness box and tell the court that uh, she or he is subjected to sexual abuse in a poxo case uh, or in in rape case the prosecutor has to come in the witness box and tell the court that uh, that that, that, that sexual intercourse has taken place without her consent so this dna test or other medical report etc would be available only for corroboration okay sir next question is from advocate ajay nimbarkar uh, please explore more about private complaints and further steps to be taken to get favorable orders for cheating criminal breach of trust cases the private complaint uh, as i told you there is a different procedure for private complaint in a private complaint uh, you directly present the court in uh, present the complaint in the court of the magistrate and the uh, london magistrate after going to the averment in the complaint if he feels that there is a prima facie case then he proceeds to issue process against the accused under section 204 of the criminal case and uh, uh, the procedure is that you uh, the complainant has to examine himself or no then he has to examine his witnesses all the witnesses the defense at that time may cross examine may not cross examine the witnesses because this is evidence before charge so in private cases the evidence is before charge is laid and after the witnesses are examined by the complainant then thereafter if there is a uh, if it is sufficient for the purpose of framing charge against the accused then the court frames charge at that time the accused can also argue for discharge If according to him there is no sufficient evidence which is coming forth for the purpose of framing charge and thereafter the accused can again uh, cross examine the witness the accused uh, can uh, uh, cross examine the witnesses even after the framing of charge so therefore this is a different procedure in a uh, complaint case whereas in a uh, case instituted upon a police report even if it is triable by the court of magistrate it is on the basis of charge sheet that the case goes to the court the cognizance is taken by the court only on the basis of charge sheet after the charge sheet is filed then the court proceeds to frame charge against the accused accused may of course file application for discharge the court may hear him for the, on the point of discharge 
and they are after frame trial against them and then the prosecution examines witnesses one after the other and uh, uh accused uh, 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 advocate for the accused cross examines the witnesses and after the prosecution evidence is over then the accused witness under section 313 prpc is recorded the judge asks him questions asks him explanation etc then if he wants to examine different witnesses he may examine different witnesses at that stage and thereafter the arguments are advanced by the prosecution and the defense and the judgment is delivered so there is a uh, separate procedure for cases instituted upon a police report and cases instituted otherwise than on police report that is in private case thank you thank you sir thank you sir uh, all participants are requested if any questions or queries they have please send the whatsapp message because two minutes have left uh, i am uh, we are very thankful to uh, advocate sir nimbalkar sir uh, who have delivered nice and very informative lecture we have also thanks to all participants and we'll also we have thanks to kista team who have extended the, our uh, tenure uh, lecture tenure thanks to all thanks to nimbalkar sir once again thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you